Hello and welcome to NTV Profit. Joining us today is Mr. Raghu Panikar of uh, Kane Semicon and Banu Priya Krishna of Perceptives Solutions. Uh, uh, welcome to NTV Profit. Thank you. So, first of all, uh, just wanted to know what is the update on the OSAT project that you're planning in India, sir? So, uh, at this point in time, we are almost in the last stages of getting this approved with, uh, with the government. Mm -hmm. You know, it should be a couple of weeks away mm -hmm. uh, where should we should get the approval. Okay. So that's the stage it is in now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what are the plans for this facility in terms of production capacity, number of assembly lines? If you can give us some details about this. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, we intend to get into NOSAT because we are mm -hmm. primarily a EMS company, mm -hmm. Electronic Manufacturing Services. Um, with the investment that has come in through an IPO mm -hmm. fundraising year, year and a half back, you know, we decided either to do more of EMS, mm -hmm. which is one option. Mm -hmm. Second is to vertically integrate ourselves and get into closer to electronics. Mm -hmm. That is semiconductor, which is to do manufacturing in semiconductor, mm -hmm. hence OSAT. It augurs well with the services setup that we are doing electronic manufacturing services, hence outsource semiconductor assembly and test. Another area that we are going into is, is bare board PCB mm -hmm. because these are the two components which are imported items mm -hmm. and these are the two components that get into EMS. Mm -hmm. Hence, we are getting into semiconductor manufacturing. So, uh, the, uh, the semiconductor manufacturing that we intend to put is almost on a 50-acre land. Mm -hmm. That necessarily means that we have huge capacity to build. Mm -hmm. There will be approximately around uh, you know, 13 to 14 manufacturing lines. Mm -hmm. Case in point is another important aspect of engineering, mm -hmm. which is the ATE part of it, mm -hmm. which nobody else is thinking in, in India. Okay. Uh, and that's where we're going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. The full capacity of uh, this plant, which will come on a 50-acre line, which is 13 to 14, mm -hmm. will churn out 1 billion devices, okay. a full capacity. That's annual capacity? Annual capacity of okay. 1 billion devices. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is the kind of investment that will go into producing this 1 billion uh, chips on an annual basis? Yeah. On a, on a roughly basis, if I look at the first five year of investment, somewhere around, uh, you know, 5,000 crores. Okay. But then, as you would know, mm -hmm. a part is borne by the government, central mm -hmm. government subsidy, part is borne by the state government subsidy, the remaining part, we have raised money mm -hmm. uh, through QIP mm -hmm. and the money is available. But that doesn't mean that after five years, what happens, right? Okay. Uh, after five years or within five years, we have to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to invest in newer technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to invest in CapEx mm -hmm. after the fifth year, which means there's a lot of investment that will happen. Mm -hmm. And um, the current financials that we worked out, it seems to us that we'll become positive in the third or th three and a half years. What? do you want to achieve from this plant? So what is the revenue target from this plant, say from year one till year five, and when you properly become uh, after the first round of funding that goes on? I'm almost on a silent period for the, for okay. the because Keynes Semicon, Keynes Semicon is the subsidiary of yeah. Keynes Technology, and you know, Keynes Technology just mm -hmm. concluded a very, very good year mm -hmm. of last year. So I'm not allowed to put in the numbers. Mm -hmm. But then, um, you know, if I may stick out and say, mm -hmm. uh, my own vision, mm -hmm for Keynes Semiconductor is to make it a billion dollar. Okay. Uh, I got to list this. Over? That's a good question. Yes. I got to list this mm -hmm. into the stock market. Okay. So this is the two dream that I'm living. Okay. And then necessarily like Bhano mentioned that, you know, mm -hmm. what do we do for this, for the engineering community, for the students and stuff mm -hmm. like that? You know, we missed mechanical engineering. There is a lead frame design. Mechanical engineers will come in. Chemical engineers come in with a lot of gases being used. Yeah. So I'm sure, you know, we're going to net net create a positive effect. What happened, like Banu mentioned, 30 years before in design, we are going to replicate that or do it a little bit more faster mm -hmm. in the semiconductor manufacturing. So, you know, make it a billion dollar, list it, mm -hmm. and make sure that, you know, we have abundance of uh, talent in India. Mm -hmm. We rather use the talent and also export mm -hmm. it to those countries which are aging a lot and there are not much engineering community there and stuff like that. So that's what I would tell all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Panikar. Thank you, Banu Priya, for the, for the lovely chat. All the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello and welcome to NTV Profit. Joining us today is Mr. Vivek Raghuraman. He's the co-founder of Mixtech, a US-based startup involved in the AI and HPC sectors. He's in India at the Dam Capital Investor Summit, uh, Investor Meet, uh, with a new uh, 
AI chip, so to speak. Uh, Mr. Raghuraman, uh, welcome to Entry Profit. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, we went to your website uh, to check what you do. Mm -hmm. So, your website says Siliconization in Progress. Right. So, let's just start the conversation there. Sure. So, uh, what we as a company are focused on is uh, improving the interconnects between uh, the server chips, the high-performance computing chips, and the new GPUs or the AI accelerator chips that are being designed. So today, uh, as you are all aware, uh, most of the development or the, the largest GPUs that are being made are by companies like NVIDIA. And then eventually these are uh, need to be scaled mm. uh, to uh, you know big size data centers. Right now they are very small clusters. But then as you start scaling them, you run into significant power issues mm -hmm. in terms of the network uh, mm -hmm. uh, power consumption. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to address that space mm -hmm. by using a technology called silicon photonics. Mm -hmm. Now this technology has, so optic fibers have always existed in data centers, uh, but the density requirements of uh, uh, these GPUs to communicate with each other, the latency requirements are all driving for a paradigm shift in terms of uh, implementing uh, these new uh, silicon photonics based chips mm -hmm. that can be integrated with the GPUs. Mm -hmm. So the newness in this is basically today's GPUs are interconnected to each other mm -hmm. uh, predominantly using electrical links. Mm -hmm. These are high speed uh, electrical links where the data goes between the GPUs or GPU to memory mm -hmm. and the communication happens for whatever the large language models or the generative AIs are being developed. So you have something uh, on our, actually on the table that in front of us there's actually a chip that you have brought us. Just talk to us about this particular chip. So yes, so you talked about siliconization, about what uh, we are going to be doing. So mm -hmm. this is a prototype of the siliconization that we are looking at, mm -hmm. wherein uh, what you see is a very large body uh, GPU ASIC mm -hmm. that is uh, constructed using the most advanced packaging technologies, mm -hmm. uh, 2.5D, 3D integration packaging technologies, mm -hmm. and the silicon photonics integrated with that packaging. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be sort of the future mm -hmm. of how the GPU GPUs are going to be designed mm -hmm. and how the GPUs are going to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. So this is a photon based transmission rather than electron based? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So, so this uses photons mm -hmm. which are directly converted uh, at the package mm -hmm. and then transmitted out. Okay. In that sense, of course, they are going to consume less power because that's the biggest concern about AI chips, AI supercomputers, their power consumption. So how much does this particular chip reduce or address that concern? So uh, the major power that is consumed in the AI chip is actually the coarse silicon. Mm -hmm. But the other uh, aspects of it, this is basically the networking, the memory, these are other aspects that consume power. Mm -hmm. And then there is an aspect of density. So with, with this solution, it provides two benefits. Mm -hmm. One is the density and the other is the reach. Mm -hmm. And uh, combined, it saves about 30% of the power mm -hmm. for a, coming out of a GPU ASIC compared to the technologies that are available today. All right. Thank you so much, Vivek, for speaking with us. Uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. This is Tushar for NTV Profit.